epilepsy warning for flashing lights and colors. I've been a Disney Park fan for literally as long as I can remember. Looking back on some of the older attractions though, there are plenty of them that can turn some heads. Recently, I shared a poll with my viewers through my community tab to determine the most unusual Disney Park attractions out there. So as voted on by the fans, here are the top 10 strangest Disney attractions. Number 10, Adventures Through Inner Space at Disneyland. This is by far the most psychedelic attraction ever made by Disney. First opening in Tomorrowland in 1967, this dark ride shrunk guests to the size of an atom and took them on a journey to the center of a snowflake. Guests would enter the queue area and approach a giant device known as the Mighty Microscope. They would then board small ride vehicles known as Atomobiles, the design of which would later be reincorporated as the Haunted Mansion's Doom Buggies. On a side note, if Disney made a Lion King ride, they'd probably call the vehicles Furroris. I'm sorry, that was really bad. After boarding the Atomobiles, guests would enter the Mighty Microscope. Meanwhile, onlookers in line saw an interesting illusion that used miniature models to make it look like guests were actually shrinking. After entering the microscope, passengers were taken on a trippy adventure through the snowflake, encountering walls of ice crystals, giant water molecules, and even the nucleus of the atom itself. And towards the end, they'd come across a giant eye staring at them through a microscope. The mesmerizing imagery is literally like something out of a dream. Unfortunately, as the years went on, the ride's popularity would fade. By the mid-1980s, the ride sponsor Monsanto had pulled out of the attraction. This led Disney CEO Michael Eisner to strike a deal with George Lucas for an attraction now known as Star Tours. Though Star Tours proved to be a guest favorite, the bizarre adventures through inner space is still fondly remembered. Number 9. Ellen's Energy Adventure at Epcot when Epcot first opened in 1982, it was a much more educationally focused park that focused more on real life science than it does today. One of the park's opening day attractions was the Universe of Energy, a ride experience that took guests through the history of energy and fossil fuels. The ride's main feature was a massive diorama depicting the age of the dinosaurs. When the mid-90s came around though, Disney officials decided they needed to spice up this attraction. Plus, much of the information in the original attraction had become outdated and inaccurate by the mid-90s. This spicing up came in the form of the truly bizarre Ellen's Energy Adventure. The concept for this new attraction was likely conceived in either a fever dream or a hot box. Basically, Ellen DeGeneres dreams on being on an episode of Jeopardy where all of the answers have to do with energy. She finds herself competing against Jamie Lee Curtis and Albert Einstein, but can't seem to get any of the questions right. Then Bill Nye the Science Guy shows up and takes her on a magical journey through the history of energy. They then go back to the prehistoric era where Ellen has to fight off a dinosaur with a large branch. So yes, they manage to take an educational experience about energy and turn it into Ellen DeGeneres fighting dinosaurs. While the premise alone is indeed weird, it also somehow managed to be boring clocking in at a painful 45 minutes. Shockingly enough, this ride managed to stick around all the way until 2017. That year, this outdated attraction was closed down for good to make room for an upcoming Guardians of the Galaxy roller coaster. Meanwhile, the Ellen DeGeneres animatronic, which was removed in 2014, would be rediscovered. If you see this face in your nightmares tonight, I very sincerely apologize. Number 8. Sounds Dangerous at Disney's Hollywood Studios Imagine a show where you're looking at a black screen for most of the time. Sounds crappy, right? Well, apparently, it sounds dangerous. This attraction sat at the former location of the Monster Sound Show. This was a beloved interactive show where audience members got to add practical sound effects to video footage in real time. Sadly though, this attraction was replaced with the truly awful Sounds Dangerous in 1999. This show starred comedian and future Price's Right host Drew Carey as an undercover detective, which is about as fitting as Mila Kunis playing the Wicked Witch of the West. The show would focus on Carey wearing a hidden camera while investigating a smuggling operation at a snow globe company, and of course I'm serious. However, Carey's character turns out to be a bumbling idiot, so he's constantly messing up the video feed. For most of the show, the camera is completely obscured, and only the audio can be heard. The intent of this show was to focus on the power of sound editing, but this comes across as more of an excuse for Drew Carey to work fewer hours on the set. There's not a whole lot to say about this show, 
All I can say is that if you've ever wanted to be eaten alive by Drew Carey, then please seek help immediately. Number 7. The Aluminum Hall of Fame at Disneyland There are plenty of defunct Disneyland attractions people would like to see return. Others, though, aren't exactly in high demand for a revival. For every people mover, there's an Aluminum Hall of Fame. Yes, at one point, Disney had an entire Hall of Fame dedicated to the wonders of Aluminum. When Disneyland first started development, Walt Disney realized he couldn't afford to build his ambitious ideas for Tomorrowland. So in addition to several budget cuts, he needed to have sponsored attractions to be able to even partially open up the area. The Aluminum Hall of Fame was one such opening day attraction. Sponsored by the still-operating Kaiser Aluminum Company, this walkthrough attraction featured several exhibits made out of aluminum. One exhibit was the Venus Historic Symbol of Beauty, which was basically a giant aluminum star with what looks like an H&M mannequin inside. Another was an interactive pig named Calf, whose name stood for Kaiser Aluminum Pig. Then there was the quote-unquote Time Sphere, which was a massive polished aluminum sphere where images of knights, firemen, and spacemen would be projected onto it, all of which wearing, of course, aluminum. This odd attraction would only end up lasting five years. Kaiser Aluminum actually tried to cancel their sponsorship after accusing Disney of giving too much television airtime to their competitors and Walt Disney himself had to convince them to stick around. Of course, with aluminum as common as it is today, this exhibit would go over like a lead balloon in modern times. On the other hand, I'd love to see a Kathy Mitchell Red Copper Hall of Fame. Now that would be something worth checking out. Number 6. The Bathroom of Tomorrow at Disneyland the name alone sounds like something out of The Simpsons, but it actually used to exist at Disneyland. Sponsored by the Crane Plumbing Company, this was yet another sponsored opening day attraction at Tomorrowland. Believe it or not, this exhibit was opened by Walt Disney himself with a valve turning ceremony. The basic gist of the exhibit was to show how the very concept of the bathroom would evolve to fit the needs of the modern consumer. Then of course there was the more laughable display which showcased a golden tub and a golden toilet, because someone figured that taking a sh just wasn't luxurious enough for the modern consumer. There's not much else to say about this attraction since there isn't a lot of information about it. But let's move on to the next attraction before I start putting terrible puns into the script. Number 5. Splashtacular at Epcot Based on Tokyo Disneyland's 10th anniversary show, Splashtacular was once hyped up as Epcot's next major attraction. Disney pulled out all the stops for this show, even going as far as to massively upgrade the park's Fountain of Nations. The fountain itself was fitted with giant nozzles that would provide dazzling water effects for the show. First opening in November 1993, this sci-fi themed show had one of the strangest premises of any Epcot attraction. The show starts off with several metallic background dancers introducing Mickey Mouse, who makes his entrance on a cherry picker. Mickey's friends join in and start singing about their favorite colors for some reason. While the first part of the show seems more like an episode of Dora the Explorer in Space, the show is interrupted by a towering alien monster with the biggest set of pecs you'll ever see. This huge guy is carrying the real villain, an unnamed alien sorceress. The sorceress plans on stealing the color from Mickey's planet because apparently, intergalactic war wiped out all the color on her own planet. Because apparently, that bright, vibrant, red and gold outfit she's wearing doesn't count. Seriously, she looks like if Iron Man was a Las Vegas showgirl. Things get even crazier when Mickey summons his guards and the sorceress responds by summoning the show's wackiest element, a giant cyborg T-Rex with an exposed brain and a metallic skeleton. This dinosaur named Pterosaurix was likely the byproduct of Imagineers having one too many brownies. As expected, Mickey defeats the monster and apparently blows up the sorceress, which is pretty damn harsh on Mickey's part. Unfortunately, this unusual stage production would only last seven months, with Disney saying its fantasy sci-fi elements just didn't fit the World's Fair convention theme of Epcot at the time. It was also said to be less popular than Disney had hoped. Fortunately, the water nozzles were kept in place, and they would operate all the way until the fountain's demolition in 2019. Number 4. Mickey Mania at Magic Kingdom and Tokyo Disneyland This parade should have been called Mickey's Giant Ego. Don't get me wrong, this parade holds a special place in my heart, but the concept alone was undeniably unusual. This daytime parade was about all things Mickey, with an ultra-heavy dosage of the 90s. Various abstract floats would be dressed up in Mickey's color palette, and in true 90s fashion, the parade managed to mix in extreme sports as well. 
rollerblades, BMX riders, and of course, skateboarders. On the surface, this just seems like a typical hip and cool 90s parade, but things really do get weird. First there's these round Mickey costumes that look like old inflatable punching bags. Then there's this cursed looking inflatable where an extremely disproportionate Mickey is walking on his hands. And as if that wasn't enough to satisfy the mouse's ego, we have a Mickey hat, Mickey's gloves, Mickey's shoes, and Mickey's ball. And even further, Mickey forces the other Disney characters to ride around on giant tricycles while he gets to ride on a giant float. In all seriousness though, this was a colorful and creative parade that I fondly remember watching at the Magic Kingdom. Honestly, despite the fact that it's Mickey's ego trip, I wouldn't mind seeing this parade return. Number 3, The Making of Me at Epcot. Now this show is going to be difficult to explain without getting demonetized, so I'll do my best here. First opening in 1989, this short film was an attraction inside the park's Wonders of Life pavilion. Hosted by Martin Short, this film goes into the subjects of conception and birth. For the most part, the film is pretty unremarkable and feels more like something you'd watch in a middle school biology class than at a theme park. The most notable part about this film is a brief animated segment where S-word cells compete in a literal race to fertilize a valley girl egg cell. Even though this subject is nothing to be ashamed about, it's odd that it was just plopped inside a theme park like this. Sure, there was a warning sign at the front advising guests of its content, but people don't exactly go to a theme park to watch a glorified said film. It just felt bizarre and out of place, and yet it still managed to last all the way until the pavilion's closure in 2007. It would soon be replaced with a movie about wine for the Seasonal Food and Wine Festival. Number 2, The Clown Slide at Disney's Boardwalk Inn. This is the only section of the list that isn't at a Disney theme park. Instead, it was at Disney's Boardwalk Inn one of the most picturesque hotels in the entire Disney World Resort. First opening in 1996, this hotel is chock full of amenities, one of which is a massive pool complex for the whole family to enjoy. This pool features a water slide which is modeled as a tribute to classic amusement parks like Coney Island. It seems like a wholesome family attraction at first, but at one point, this slide was truly creepy. Now you might be wondering how a water slide can be creepy, well, ladies and gentlemen, take a look at this. Yes, this monstrosity actually existed on Disney World property. This thing was like five or six phobias all wrapped into one package. You'd think parents would complain about how undeniably creepy the exit to the slide was. Surprisingly enough, though, it would be over 20 years before this was finally removed in 2020. And Disney didn't just remove it, they hacked it into pieces. The slide's exit would soon be redesigned to feature a large mural of Mickey and his friends. Number 1. The Wizard of Bras at Disneyland No, I'm not making this up, and yes, this actually existed at Disneyland. As I said earlier, many of Disneyland's opening day attractions were sponsored by various companies who would pay Disney to promote their products and services. One of these companies was the Hollywood Maxwell Brazier Company of Los Angeles. This company sold a wide catalog of women's underwear and lingerie and would end up setting shop on Disneyland's Main Street. The shop would be named Intimate Apparel, Brasiers, and Torcelettes. The store would sell the company's lingerie, but it wasn't just a store, it was an attraction of its own. Hollywood Maxwell would take the store one step further by adding a mascot to it named the Wonderful Wizard of Bras. This wizard was portrayed as a jovial magic man wearing a turban. He would be represented as a rotating figure, who greeted guests with a wave of his wand. The wizard would stand on a rotating platform, which would showcase both modern and 19th century lingerie. All the while, a tape recorder would play a brief promotional spiel about women's underwear. Memorable lines from this tape include, The truth is that even in Granny's day, being a doll required a lot of pull. Also, needless to say, Granny's secrets were well hidden, why she'd turn green with envy if she could see the lift today's girl gets from our new line. And as if that weren't awkward enough, there were reportedly 3D illusion boxes where you could look inside and watch the clothes disappear off miniature figures of women, revealing their undergarments. Yeah, Disneyland basically had peep shows at one point. Suffice to say, there's no chance in hell this would happen today. The store itself would only operate for one year, as Hollywood Maxwell would reportedly end their contract due to labor disputes and a desire to focus on the East Coast market. To this day, the building housing the store still stands on the property. Though you can't open the door, the interior was used as an extension to the China Closet Store. 
So the next time you visit this store, remember that an extremely awkward attraction once sat there. Before we wrap things up, I just want to give a special shout out to my new Patreon supporters. Verbal shout outs start at the gold tier, so if you don't hear your name, it will be listed at the end of the video. Here is a special shout out to Terex Corbin and Jamie Flower. Thank you all so much, and if you want to support me on Patreon, you can do so once again at the link in the description. Thanks for watching everyone. Feel free to like, share, and subscribe. You can follow me on social media on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, or you can check out my website at themeparkcrazy.com. This is Theme Park Crazy, and I'll see you all next time. Did you get so close that the man's actually the woman's How this happened is, is truly one of the great, grand secrets we share as human beings. But believe it or not, all of us, everyone who's ever been born, came into being because their parents